All right, so now we come to the next big meat and potatoes portion of our presentation. Uh, this is the mud box portion, and you're going to actually see uh, 3D concepting with mud box. So uh, Craig is basically going to take you through how you can do 3D concept with mud box. Normally people start with, you know, a 2D sketch and they start drawing it. And somehow it goes from 2D sketch to, like, let's make the finished piece. And Craig's really going to show you how you can really use mud box to build a middle step there where you can really try out some ideas actually in 3D and see how they work before you go and really start to dedicate yourself to building the final model. So Craig, why don't you take it away? Thanks, Sean. Bonsoir, Montreal. I'm going to uh, start off here by taking a look at Mudbox 2010. And what I want to do is just um, spend a little bit of time looking at how you can create some custom tools to work with within Mudbox. And by that, I mean some custom maps and some custom little brushes down here, some little tools that we're going to create. So I have this little scrap pile in here, and it's just a simple object. Uh, I think this one is actually built in Max. And I'm just bringing it over here into Mudbox. And then what I can actually do is start to create some maps that I can build up on my, uh, my object. In this case, it's going to be this, this character here. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and actually um, create a little plane underneath this. And that's just going to serve as my little backdrop for my, my displacement map I'm going to create. And I can go ahead and extract this texture map um, using my uh, displacement map extraction here. So we'll just take a look at this here. I'm just going to leave the plane as my target model here. And my source model is just going to be that little scrap object. So I just actually want to create, uh, take the detail, the data from this object here and just put on a flat plane. And I'm, I'm actually going to use a, uh, we'll leave it at about 1K image there. And you'll see in our actual file format uh, choices here, we can uh, go anywhere from 8-bit, 16-bit, up to 32-bit. And I can use a 32-bit floating point RGBA image there. I can put it out as an EXR. And if I use 32-bit, uh, it's going to give me as much data as I can pack in there. So I get a nice, really accurate, accurate little sculpt with that. A couple other ways that we can do this now in Mudbox 2010 is, uh, let me just turn that off. We can use a screen distance filter here. And I'm just going to go and take a look through my top view camera. So I'm actually just kind of uh, taking a look at my screen distance here, kind of like a Z-depth uh, view here. And from that, if I go and take a look at that filter there, I can go ahead and save a 16-bit image out right from there. Or I can go ahead and use a save screen image here. And I can customize my side and con constrain the proportions to the size of the screen. I can use the screen size. I can double the screen size. You can see I can, it's actually unlimited the size that you can make this, this image here. So let's just jump back into our perspective camera. And we'll turn this guy off here. And this is actually really useful, this concept of taking geometry and building brushes out of it, or taking geometry and building images that you can pile on or load on uh, for detail onto a character. And in this case here, if we go into Photoshop, I have this kind of, kind of quick concept sketch here uh, mocked up in Photoshop. And then often what you'll do when you're concepting is try to come up with some, some reference images that you, you want to work with for the detail. So you can see these swatches I have along the side here. And I just grabbed these, actually, from, uh, from, the, from the web. In this case here, cgtextures.com. They've got a great texture resource. So they have a whole scrap area there. And I went in there and grabbed a couple uh, images to bring over. So in Photoshop, I can use that to kind of build up my little concept reference uh, images as swatches. And then if we just, uh, let's just jump right back into Mudbox here. And we'll just get rid of these guys here. And we'll just display our simple base mesh here. So I have uh, this little simple base mesh. It was actually built in Maya, nothing fancy, pretty simple. It actually has uh, pretty simple laid out uh, UVs there. You can see the wireframes, about 2,500 uh, polys for this guy here. And what I can do um, with these little custom tools, let me just step them up in, in resolution. So you can see I'm just going to step up to a uh, subdivision of about level 5 here. So I'm not going too crazy on the subdivision. I'm going to bring them up to about 2.5 million polys. And then what I can do from there is start taking my little library of custom tools and start uh, applying it in there. So I'll just drop a whole new sculpt layer down. And just take a look at my little library of tools here I've made. So we have a bunch of little images that I've created here. In this case here, I've got a little uh, discarded old jalopy car. And what we can actually do with that is use a custom tool to start smashing that detail into our character here. So. I've just gone ahead and created a whole new, if you go underneath the Sculpt Tools menu, Add Tool, you can customize any of these tools into something that you want here. And so this scrap tool I've made, 
all it is is uh, stamp spacing maximized out to 100. You can actually go beyond 100 in there, but I've put it out to 100 because I just want to be able to pound that detail in. Fall off, I've kept it uh, completely solid, so it's just a big, complete, blocked-in fall off on there. And then under advanced here, I'm using 100% of the size and strength on my, my pen pressure here, so I'm just pounding it in there really quickly as well. So let's just take a look at, uh, at this guy here. So what I can do is I can just start going along and, and kind of put that um, right into my, uh, my model there. So you can see I have a little, the little jalopy guy in there. I'm actually, just gonna, we have two different choices for ambient occlusion now in Mudbox 2010 as well. And NVIDIA, um, ambient occlusion, you can find that underneath the new filter menu and the viewport filters. And then we have our own default uh, ambient occlusion here. And this is useful just to turn on while you're sculpting so you can see the, uh, the depth of it here. So as well in this little library, I've got a, uh, well, I've got the rear end of, his car, of the car here, right? So we can kind of just smash that through his, his back here. And you can see these are all 32-bit depth, 32-bit uh, um, images here, floating point. So I, I'm getting all the little details on the, the vehicle there. And then we have a bunch of other things in here we can start to... Uh, I've got a little piece of fence scrap on here. And the nice thing is I don't have to stick with that custom tool just to put those in. I can start rubbing it in here with um, the sculpt brush. So I'm just going to do that, bring this down a bit, and then I can just start rubbing in as much of the detail or as little of the detail as I want. And of course, I can inverse this using the control key as I go along as well. So start overlaying some geometry in there and... Uh, take a bunch of other, let's see, we've got this actual scrap pile that we were looking at there, the actual object here. So the, here's the 32-bit uh, map that comes out. You'll notice it actually looks like it's opaque white on here. If we go into our image browser, let me just jump up and show you the actual uh, um, little, uh, here we go. So where is that one there? We'll take a look at it here. The image browser within uh, Mudbox is actually uh, equipped to handle 32-bit floating point images. So uh, HDRI images. So if I use my plus and minus keys, I can adjust the exposure on it. So you can see there's the detail, the different uh, depths of the data in that actual image. So you can use this to kind of preview your, your overall um, uh, HDR images in, in, uh, within Mudbox. So with this one here, just go ahead and stick this on. And the cool thing as well within, use that scrap tool again, within Mudbox is we now have the ability, previous to 2010, we couldn't use mirroring on stencils, so we can now do that. So I can just go ahead and we'll just throw a mirror uh, function on here, and maybe we'll make this a little bit smaller, and we'll just kind of pound it in the side of his head there. And you see that we actually get some nice detail right across the other side there. So I can take a number of these stencils here and just keep mirroring it across as I go. And we have a bunch of different tools and uh, little, little custom maps in here. You'll see in the uh, actual sculpt, I put a bunch of these kind of things around in here, so I kind of rub a bunch of old tires and things like that into his back. But these are the little custom maps that I've created here. Let's take a look at the use of reference images. So we were looking at the 2D the concept sketch there in Photoshop, and we had those reference images for the, the look and the feel that we want to use. If I jump back into my image browser here, I can access that directory there, all these images that I just grabbed off the web. And let's just take a look at some of them here. So you can see I have these cans, a bunch of different pieces of scrap. This will do here. I'm just going to grab this one and just drive it right into a stencil right in the 3D view. And we'll just bring it down into here. And let me just go to my layers in here. Oh, yeah, we'll just use the same layer. And what I'm going to do is actually sculpt and paint in context to the, the reference images here. So this is actually kind of a cool, quick way to, to really start visualizing your overall concept here. I'm just using my sculpt brush here. And I'm just going to start rubbing in some of that detail. Again, I can just you know, just as much or as little as I want in there. You see I'm kind of getting some of that scrap detail. And then I'm just switching over to my paint tool, and I'm actually getting the, the projecting the actual color data right from that image right onto my model in there. So you can see that we're actually painting and sculpting in context to our actual reference images that we were taking a look at there before. And then we just go ahead and we have a bunch of different images here. Here's one here that I can just start to uh, use to continue on with that same idea. And I think what we'll do is actually just, let's just turn on the mirroring on there. As you can see, it's a huge uh, time saver as well when you can start mirroring with these stencils on there. So I can just start really loading this guy up with a bunch of trash and garbage on him here so he's just like a big uh, uh, heap of uh, 
garbage and trash kind of monster guy walking around here. So I can just qu quickly keep loading that stuff on there. And another thing that we can do, actually, we'll just jump into our viewport filters here again. Turn off the uh, ambient occlusion on here. And we'll just do a normal map preview. So as I'm sculpting, one of our new viewport filters will actually let you see how your normal map is coming along there. And one of the cool things here as well is that I can actually sculpt in the normal map view there as well, right? So you can fully sculpt in here if you wanted to. You could actually just continue to rub in some some actual detail on there in the, the, the normal map view if you, if you really wanted to, if you wanted to take a look at that. So we'll just jump back to this guy here. And what I actually want to do here is take a look at a way that we can work with normal maps in a, in a bit of a different light here. So I'm just going to uh, turn off this sculpt layer here, and we'll just put on um, a full sculpt paint I have on here. And we'll just go into this paint layer here. We'll turn this off. So there I just have a, a really simple layer of this, this map that I was using um, on here previously, just, just building up a bunch of details in there. Just a color map I was able to sculpt in some detail from. And you can see that I've loaded in a bunch of this, this garbage and junk on there, and I've sculpted in, and I've got a bunch of colors on there. Well, I can actually take advantage of applications outside of Mudbox. Uh, in this case, we'll use Photoshop. If you go on the, the uh, Paint menu underneath the little menu tab here, I'm just going to export this. So... We'll export a, a um, we'll just call this one here garbage. And we're going to see in the, the menu here, we actually have different choices, all the different choices of file formats. I'm using a PSD format. So I just saved that out. I'm just going to jump back into Photoshop. And we'll just go ahead and open that garbage file. And one of the first things you'll notice when we get in there is that it gives you this nifty little UV mesh overlay, just so you can see how the, your, your texture fits within the, uh, the actual UV uh, layout. And then I'm just going to do some really quick adjustments here in Photoshop. So uh, the idea overall is I can take advantage of all the tools within Photoshop here to uh, the power of Photoshop as I'm working away. Let's just adjust the hue and saturation here. So maybe these reds, I can bring that down. There's a lot of green in there. I'm going to change the, the hue a bit of that. And then maybe we'll just do a quick unsharp mask in here. So I just want to sharpen up a bit of that detail. And then I'm just going to control S, save it, and jump right back over to Mudbox. And I can either right-click right on the actual uh, layer itself or go underneath the menu tab and just go refresh selected. And you'll see it actually refresh in the, in the viewport there. So we get this, uh, this nice little live bridge with Photoshop. And that's still live. I can keep going back and changing that layer or any other layer for that matter here as well. So. One of the other things I want to do is let's just turn off the actual diffuse map on there and take a look at some specular here. So if I have this uh, model here with all these sculpting detail on here, I'm going to jump into the paint tools. And one of the new, you can see we have a clone brush now and a dry brush. And the dry brush is a very powerful tool for uh, painting details that you, it's, it's actually painted by a plane. By the, it's, it's based on the radius of your brush. So the bigger the radius, the deeper the paint is going to go, the smaller the radius, the finer the details I'm going to pick up on the higher points of this sculpted geometry here. So with my dry brush here, I just have a simple white color. And I'm, in my, I'm working in my, my spec map here. And I'm just actually painting live my specular color just based on the high points of my detail on the, the, um, all the detail on this sculpt here. And the cool thing about the dry brush as well in doing this, if I just mirror it, I'm actually not copying the exact strokes. If you can see what's happening over here on the other side, it's actually mirroring over and picking up the high points as it goes. So I, I am actually kind of doubling my, my efforts there as I go along. And I can just kind of customize what I want to do in there as well. And we can do this actually with uh, a secondary specular level. And with the reflection mask as well, you could actually do the opposite thing. And you can hold down Control, keep it completely opaque white, and hold down Control and paint the lower area is black to keep reflection out of there as well. So um, let's turn this one off here. And I'm actually going to uh, step down some of this detail here and take a look at our normal map. So I'm just going to bring this guy right down to a lower res uh, here. We'll just bring him down to about that there. And if we go on the paint level, the paint layers here, 
I'm just jumping to my bump value here. I'm actually just going to display my normal map. You can see it's just displaying as a simple bump right now. So what I want to do is jump into my, my material on this guy, go to the bottom, and you can see display bump as normal map. And it's actually now displaying my, my normal map here so I can work with it. Um, and then you'll see that we have, uh, let me just turn off the ambient occlusion on that. And you can see that we have the compatibility. We can use Maya or Max with it. And uh, we can view our normal map and actually go in and start to paint on this guy here as well. So let's just turn on some of these. Uh, just turn on some of the final, some different spec here. We actually have a reflection mask on them here as well. And I have some material presets in here. So I can just go ahead and click a material preset that I've saved here before. And I can build these, these again, custom presets that I can go ahead and build and some lighting presets on here as well. Um, it's going to tell me it's going to delete all the other lights out of the scene. Yep, that's fine. I'm using my preset for it. And then I'm just going to go into my, um, my tone mapper here and just start to get my actual overview here. So I can start to render out real time these images here and start to bring this into uh, Photoshop and just start to work up some comps here. So here you, we have this is just right out of Mudbox, taking advantage of Photoshop as well to do any color adjustments. You can see all the layers I have on the side here. And these are some of the layers I'm getting out of Mudbox. So I'm bringing in a Z-depth to use for my little composition there, a tight kind of cavity map ambient occlusion, and I could create a, a separate alpha on there if I wanted to as well. And the, the last thing quickly just to take a look at, we could take this further into Maya. You can see that using the FBX ex exporter right from uh, Mudbox now supports all those channels, all those color channels I was working with. So you can see that everything comes in all hooked up with my model here. Reflections, specular, diffuse, and the cool thing as well is my normal map comes in. If I had it as a bump, it will recognize it as a bump. But if I've got it set with a tangency uh, to its um, um, as a normal map, it'll actually recognize that, the tangency on, on that normal map to come in and bring it in as a normal map. So the last thing here was uh, the ability to actually take advantage of one of the bonus tools in Maya 2010. You can grab this off the blog, Corey Moak's blog on the area, or Stephen Russell's blog as well. You can take a look at it. Paint geometry tool, and I have all these little scrap pieces on here. So if I wanted to take this another level and actually render it out through mental ray, I could start kind of painting on some, some scrap here. So let's just do that here. And I'm just defining the geometry I want to paint as one of my little scrap guys on here. And you can see I'm just throwing down a bunch of junk on here. If I wanted to get kind of the, uh, his outline for, uh, for my render there a little bit. So just turn that one off and we'll just hide this guy here. And then I have, I used three different types of uh, little pieces of geometry, some pipes, some scrap pieces on there, little grid pieces, and just as something to add to it. I could render this through mental ray with the displacement maps out of Mudbox, or I could take that geometry and export it right into Mudbox to go ahead and continue on with the sculpt there. So. That uh, is it uh, in the end there. The overall idea here is the ability to, to kind of flesh out your concept in 3D. Take advantage of what a 3D application like Mudbox can give you with use of reference images in context to your uh, 2D original design, as well as taking advantage of what 3D brings you with changing camera perspectives rather quickly, lighting, and all the different real-time render passes I can bring out. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Craig.